Hi, this is Simon Kenlish and welcome to another Marvelous Videos. DC's Arthur Curry, or Aquaman, is one of the founding members of the Justice League. He has a unique heritage, with his father being human, while his mother is Queen Atlana from the underwater city of Atlantis. This unusual genetic combination resulted in Arthur manifesting superhuman strength, the ability to survive on land and water, and an ability to communicate with marine life. He found his biggest nemesis in his overly ambitious half-brother Orm, who was hell-bent on being the king of Atlantis and the ocean master who ruled the seven seas. His romantic interest was the princess of Zabel, Mira, who was initially sent to kill him. Meanwhile, as king, he tried his best to stop the Atlantean attack on the surface world as someone who belonged to both worlds. Being a half-human, half-Atlantean hybrid was complicated in the sense that beings dwelling on land and water are meant to be extremely different with respect to physiology. Not exactly a merman due to the visible lack of a tail and not exactly a human either. Arthur Curry portrays an unusual biological system that helps sustain his dual lifestyle and that is what this video is about. But before diving into the content, we would like to make a very small request to our viewers. Please subscribe to Marvelous Videos, like and comment on our video and press the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a video. We'll be grateful to you and we hope to bring you the best nerdy content. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. What does he look like? People these days might equate Aquaman's appearance to that of Jason Momoa, considering the fact that he plays the character in the movies. However, the comic version of Aquaman boasts a different appearance with his blonde hair and green orange outfit. This superhuman strength is the result of a strong skeletal and muscular structure. This is strange because creatures dwelling within the oceans generally have softer bones and musculature as a direct result of living in a buoyant environment. He visibly has a human physique as well. This is not to say that he has inherited more of his father's human side, but rather it tells us how the Atlantean and human physiques are similar enough for them to mate with one another and subsequently reproduce. In Batman's collection of files, the Dark Knight has theorized that Arthur might possess organ systems that are focused on expelling the air from Arthur's body once he dives into the deep ocean. While anyone else in his position would get waterlogged, Arthur's skin might have a coat of dense sebum that essentially prevents this from happening. Sea creatures often have slimy bodies, which allows them to regulate their body functions while preventing parasites from attaching themselves to their body. So the existence of Arthur's sebum coating is very much possible. His neurochemistry allows for him to have acute hearing and vision, giving him access to the range, just like dolphins who can communicate with one another over great distances using echolocation. This brings us to his species. Firstly, with his human father having a child with an Atlantean, it is evident that the human and Atlantean species are not too different from one another. He's not exactly a fish or an amphibian, but he is more akin to dolphin and whales, which are categorized under the umbrella of marine mammals. Because Aquaman can survive in and out of the water, he cannot be called a marine mammal, to be exact, but he continues to be a mammal nonetheless. Think about a platypus. This aquatic creature is very much a mammal, but unlike any other mammal, they lay eggs. Aquaman might be somewhat similar in that way. Not in a sense that he lays eggs, which he doesn't, but in the sense that he's an unusual mammal. His physique can also sustain the water pressure of the deep seas, decompression sickness and extremely cold temperatures, all while his body retains its original shape. Aquaman possesses an extremely high metabolism due to his physiology and marine environment, which likely helps his body to stay insulated amidst the cold temperatures. Deep sea creatures withstand enormous water pressure, which can flatten their physiology, but they also lack swim bladders and lungs, which are gas-filled spaces. As such, they are not affected by the high pressure of the deep seas, but Aquaman is someone who does not have similar anatomy and yet can withstand the same amount of pressure, if not more. He possibly has functional humanoid lungs that allow him to live on the surface. Meanwhile, gills allow marine life to breathe underwater by exchanging gases as they absorb the oxygen and expel the rest. The lack of water density causes gills to collapse, which is why fishes die outside water. This means that instead of having both lungs and gills, Aquaman has something that does the job of the gills.
cells by absorbing the oxygen from water and depleting the rest. It could be his unique skin whose pores do the job for him by regulating the passage of the gases across his cell membrane. It is possible that his cells have a highly vascular medium and unique semi-permeable membrane that specifically allows him to absorb oxygen and only oxygen under the water. It would work on the surface world as well, allowing Arthur's skin to filter out the nitrogen and carbon dioxide from the air and only allowing the oxygen to pass. Or maybe the presence of lungs would not require his skin to perform this feat on the surface. Contact with water could activate the switch, swapping the primary respiratory organ from the lungs to the skin. Aquaman has an overwhelmingly developed and strong lower body structure that makes him one of the fastest swimmers in the ocean. He does not possess the tail or the fins of a merman, and instead, his human physiology makes it seem like constant swimming would be exhausting. But it is possible that his strength and genetic makeup allow him to get accustomed to this. While humans can walk and run on land, having to do so constantly would be exhausting, requiring them to sit or rest. The same goes for other surface-dwelling animals, such as dogs and cows. It's not uncommon to see fishes floating in one space or wedging themselves in a secure spot around corals. So, as the Atlanteans are an advanced race with a high standard of living and technology, lest Aquaman gets tired, he can just rest on a chair, couch, or in this case, his throne. Hi, fishy. Can Aquaman talk to sea creatures? Out of all of his superpowers, it's his ability to telepathically communicate with marine life that stands out as his most unique selling point. He can make them do his bidding, convince dolphins to give him a ride, and get octopuses and whales to plug holes in ships that are sinking. Early into his story, he was portrayed as someone who had an easier time controlling smaller fish with lower intelligence. Meanwhile, making telepathic connections with marine mammals was much harder, although not impossible. However, he could not control every aquatic or water-based creature. For example, crocodiles, alligators, seagulls, flamingos, freshwater aquatic life, and amphibians are all water-based. However, Aquaman is the king of the seven seas, which means that he has access to underwater domain of oceans, so he cannot communicate with a freshwater fish or a crocodile. However, he can tap into parts of the brain inherited from marine ancestors, which is what he did to Superman once. In fact, all humans have evolved from marine life, making it possible for Aquaman to control certain surface dwellers as well. But because our marine heritage predates back by millions of years, trying to control a human was initially increasingly strenuous for him, making it a trick he could use only when push came to shove and with great mastery. With control over the human brain, he could also induce paralysis and pain in humans. As time went by, Arthur's ability to do so vastly improved, and he eventually grew to be an easy fit for him to achieve. On the other hand, he could not control dolphins and whales, but he could convince them to help him. However, after 2011, Aquaman's ability to communicate and control vastly evolved. The year 2015 saw Aquaman gaining access to non-aquatic, but water-based reptiles such as crocodiles. His range was also not limited to the oceans and extended extended to the swamps as well. In one instance, he summoned a sea monster, who was an octopus-crab hybrid. As big as Godzilla, it took a heavy toll on Aquaman's body to control the creature, landing him in a coma for six months. Can Aquaman fly? Mostly when you think about the average superhero with a non-human heritage, the powers that they tend to have are superhuman strength, speed, durability, senses, and the like. Arthur Curry clearly has all of them, but these superheroes also have another power, the power of flight. Superheroes like Superman, Wonder Woman, Shazam, Cyborg, Green Lantern, and Hawkgirl are some of the common examples who possess this ability. But can someone like Arthur Curry or Aquaman fly? Well, the answer is yes. Being blessed by the gods of the sea, popularly known as Poseidon, allowed Aquaman to gain this ability in the Prime Earth universe, which was created following Flashpoint and after the New 52 reboot. However, he does not use the ability a lot, especially because he does not need to. Can Aquaman do magic? Not exactly. He's not as vulnerable to it as someone like Superman. Aquaman can fight against magic spells and sorcery. For example, a mirror image of Earth Zero, Thrull, was created using black magic by the sorcerers of Atlantis. They fled to the dimension generations ago, but eventually the barrier keeping the two worlds apart began to disintegrate. To prevent their own demise, the sorcerers residing in Thrull used their black magic to make Thrull poisonous to other realities, which meant that contact 
contact with Aquaman's reality would lead to the destruction of Earth Zero as we know it. To prevent this, Aquaman went to Thuel and destroyed that world, erasing it from existence. In another instance, he used his hand to remove spells that were harsh, even on the Spectre. The trident he wields also gives him access to magical powers. Originally known as the Trident of Atlan, who is Curry's ancestor, the trident is forged with the essence of Poseidon or Neptune. With its godly and magical powers, it allows Aquaman to control the weather and generate lightning. What are you doing? This gonna work for Pinocchio. How does Aquaman's telepathy work? We already know that Aquaman's telepathy technically allows him to control anyone and everyone, thanks to life being born from water. However, he has a lot of mental and telepathic blocks that prevent him from gaining access to the bulk of his telepathic powers. There was a point where he abused his power, controlling everything under the sky, including Kryptonians and Martians. After his telepathic blocks were removed by an alien, he could command gods, shatter minds, contact dormant alter egos, and warp realities. This also resulted in Aquaman losing control over his own mind. The ability to warp realities allowed him to warp Shark into the real Shark, but using his power to this extent caused him to mutate. Eventually, he reversed his mutations and put limitations on his telepathy. However, even with limitations, he was still able to communicate with his with extraterrestrial life. With reference to his marine telepathy, he was originally portrayed as someone who could talk to fish. However, his ability to control them against their will was retconned and instead swapped for a power he could use to compel his subject into doing his bidding by subtly altering the cerebellum functioning, providing that they were willing to help. This is why he had a hard time controlling the ruthless and perpetually hungry piranhas. He later acknowledged how he could not communicate with marine life in the way people expected, primarily because said creatures did not have the necessary intelligence to hold a mutual intellectual conversation. It was revealed that the metaphysical energy of the life force was what allowed Arthur to manifest this ability as he could connect with all things sentient across the cosmos and realities. He could restore the powers and true forms of forgotten ocean gods as well. Can Aquaman's body resist the heat? The 2011 Aquaman comics bring us an Aquaman who finds himself in a very heated situation. With a physiology that can withstand life on land and water, it is hard to imagine that Aquaman withstands heat. But the 38th issue of the comic has shown that it is clearly possible. In his quest to find the villain known as Maelstrom, Curry used this trident to crack open a ground that threw him and Mira into the clasp of a rocky, fiery arena and its monster. He fought off the sentient rocky villain who was brimming with fire while walking across the heat and breaking everything that acted as an obstacle. He was also able to withstand fiery attacks and blasts while not complaining about it. This meant that the heat was not too big of a disadvantage for Aquaman, at least not enough for him to be extremely wary of it during a fight. However, it is highly likely that having to constantly find himself in such a situation would be quite bothersome. Can Aquaman reproduce? Surely Aquaman cannot give birth himself, but he's very much capable of having a child. He has found a romantic interest in Mira since the very beginning, with the two meeting one another in the 11th issue of the 1962 Aquaman comics. They encountered each other after Queen Mira was deposed from her royal position in Dimension Aqua by Leron. She was subsequently exiled and fled to Earth, where she managed to get Aquaman and Aqualad to help her. So when Leron arrived in Atlantis to find Mira, the criminal was engaged to her, Aquaman, Aqualad and Quisp in a fight. It ended with them losing against Leron and subsequently being taken back to Dimension Aqua as prisoners. In the end, a discovery proved how the residents of the Dimension could lose their powers if traces of lead found in oil were introduced to their water. Aquaman used this knowledge to defeat Leron and invite Mira to stay back on Atlantis with him. Their relationship eventually developed, with Mira becoming his queen and eventually getting pregnant. However, things were still not as simple as they seemed to be. In the 23rd issue, it was revealed by an Atlantean doctor that a pregnant Mira would birth a child who was doomed. Aquaman's mother had a hereditary disease that ensured that Aquaman's child would not survive. It would also lead to the death of the mother. The reason why Atlana was able to have a child and survive was that she received a serum made from the root of the rainbow animone. It could only be found in the Gulf of Terrors, which was way too far from Atlantis, and so Aquaman left to find the serum.
serum with Aqualad. Fortunately, Mira was able to receive the serum in time and gave birth to a healthy Aqua baby while continuing to stay alive. However, the serum ended up giving the baby weird powers that somewhat acted as a threat to the nation, prompting people to demand that he get exiled. His out of control powers caused him to create dangerous creatures by himself, and ultimately, Aqua Baby, Aquaman, and Mira went into exile. Later, they were attacked by a mutant who was blasted away by Aqua Baby. The blast exhausted his serum induced powers, and the Aqua family was able to return to Atlantis. How can Aquaman breathe underwater? After several hypotheses and theorizations with regards to Aquaman's ability to breathe in and out of the water, we finally get some clarity from the director of the 2018 Atlantis movie. And the justification is a lot more disgusting than you may imagine. Aquaman and the Atlanteans can breathe under the water because they vomit water when they come to the surface. For example, when Tom Curry is the Arthur's father and he witnesses Atlanta who was washed up ashore, she expelled water out of her lungs after regaining consciousness. In in another scene from the movie, Mira surrounded Orm with a bubble of air, causing Orm to expel the water from his system as well. So this basically tells us how their lungs do not have air like that of a surface dweller. So they can breathe under water due to their physiology and their speech under the water does not result in the formation of bubbles. However, when they do touch down on the surface world, they need to expel that water to fill their lungs with air. In fact, humans and other surface creatures can actually breathe liquid air, even though we do not usually do it. You might recall the rat from the abyss being able to do so when, after being submerged in oxygen-rich liquid, when it went for a swim, the liquid was drained out from the lungs and replaced by air. The experiment with respect to the rat was accurate. It has not been tested on humans yet, but it is plausible that in certain circumstances, we can breathe liquid. However, such a substance does not naturally occur, and our lungs are also not equipped to easily switch from breathing air to breathing liquid. Atlanteans were originally surface-dwelling humans who took to the seas, so centuries of evolution led them to having lungs that can carry out this switch. In fact, not everyone who took to the seas survived. Only 10% of the original Atlantean population adapted to life underwater as they were able to evolve. Is Aquaman a god, so with the ability to sustain his life in water and land while being able to fly, resist heat, war, realities and control anyone, is it possible that Aquaman is a god? Since Aquaman's storyline overlaps with Greek mythology, the idea of goodhood becomes arbitrary. Aquaman is not a god in the sense that he's not the creator, however mythology is known for having several major and minor gods, with each god presiding over specific domains, and Arthur Curry happens to live within the domain of Poseidon the god of the seas. But despite not being a divine entity, Arthur Curry has a divine lineage. Originally, his father was Atlan, an ancient demigod. As Arthur became the king of the seven seas, he was challenged in combat by the god Triton. With Arthur winning the battle, he became the lord of the oceans. Killing Triton also led to Arthur absorbing his godly essence. As such, with a demigod father and godly essence, Arthur was definitely not a regular human. But he was not a god either, as stated by Poseidon and later. Arthur Curry was a demigod. This was reconnected in the new 52 storyline, where he made to be the son of Queen Atlana and Tom Curry, who was a lighthouse keeper and very much a human. However, Arthur has wielded Poseidon's godly powers on a number of occasions, especially with him having the sacred trident. Does Aquaman have a healing factor? Yes, Aquaman possesses accelerated healing, which is not as fast as the likes of Wonder Woman, but within three days, Aquaman can heal from very severe injuries. He needs to be submerged in water to heal fast, which is what we have seen even in the Justice League animated series after he was taken out by Bazooka. Without water, his life and physiology are comparatively less resilient. Is Aquaman immortal? Aquaman is not immortal, but he does have a strong life force. Not only is he strong under the water and can endure the deep pressure of the ocean, but he is also 50 times stronger than the average Atlantean and can live way longer than compared to them. He can spend more time on the surface as well, while other Atlanteans can only stay there for a limited amount of time. This is not to say that Arthur can stay on the surface for as long as he wants, because he needs to return to the water eventually. Failing to do so will weaken him and can potentially cause him to die. Other than that, he can obviously be killed, he will just not die a natural death very easily. And with that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of Arthur Curry? Did you enjoy this video? If yes, then don't forget to leave a like and comment on this video. Till then, goodbye and have a good one. You dishonor this place with your presence. Stop!